Hey guys, thank you for uh, taking the time to check out this PowerPoint. This is Vision Casting um, with Jermaine Thomas. And I will be narrating and navigating these PowerPoints with you. Um, if you're listening to this, more than likely uh, you didn't have the opportunity to make it to the workshop itself. Or you did and you're just going back to review. Um, and then at the end of uh, this uh, narration, there will be the actual clip of the uh, video recording of a great portion of the um, workshop itself via video um, and then there was some, um, some some of the video content uh, didn't cover the entirety but it's enough uh, substantive information there on the video itself to kind of bring you into the moment um, that we all had and the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit you know being present and I miss um, so, so just thank you for, uh, I guess we would say vision casting Dr. Miles Monroe is one of the um, one of the far most uh, leading voices um, that have touched on the power of purpose, um, or speaking to God's purpose and intent for our lives. Um, uh, he's no longer with us, but uh, his legacy of God really using him as an um, author, inspirational speaker, pastor, and leader in the body of Christ. Um, and this is one of his quotes. The graveyard is the richest place on earth because it is here that you will find all the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled, the books that were never written, the songs that were never sung, the inventions that 
would never share, the cures that were never discovered, all because someone was too afraid to take that first step, keep with the problem, or determined to carry out their dream. Um, and as I was sharing with the group um, that, you know, confronting um, some paradigms or different mindsets that we usually have around, you know, stepping out and what uh, God's put in our heart, you know, that thing that nudges at us, um, oftentimes we just kind of, you know, sit it on the shelf and, um, you know, we get those thoughts of what if, you know, what if it never come to fruition or, you know, what if this, I don't have this, or I don't have that. So oftentimes fear, fear of the unknown or fear of, fear of stepping out, fear of success often uh, becomes a hindrance in us stepping out and, you know, very much what God's put within us to prosper us and not just to prosper us, but to prosper the world around us. Um, an idea is powerful and it has the ability to leave a legacy. Um, and God has given you something on the inside to be um, a blessing uh, to the world around you and in, in, in a means to prosper you. Um, and so uh, navigating through uh, these uh, slides, I hope that, you know, something the Holy Spirit will stir or strike in your heart or this quote that Dr. Miles Moreau has would definitely speak to uh, that passion that burns within you, those ideas or maybe old ideas. Uh, we was talking with the group um, and we all kind of chuckled, you know, you had that idea and then you watched one of those infomercials. You're just like, man, I had an idea like that. And you never launched out to it. And also, too, that often our ideas uh, don't necessarily have to fall within a line of, of a business. You know, God can be, you know, stern and, and inspiring your heart to 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 form and shape um, a ministry. So um, it could fall in those various categories of what God's giving you in a book or a song or you know, a movie or, you know, in the form of a ministry or outreach. So, um, you know, I hope you're being stirred. Here we see in uh, uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 through 3, And God answered, write this, write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. The vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait. It doesn't lie. And if it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way. 
and it will come right on time. Here, you know, we hear God in his, uh, this verse here. Y'all make you, like, hear him clearly, you know, saying to you, so write the vision. Um, I, I think of um, uh, Dave, you know, uh, of Wendy's or the guy, uh, the colonel from KFC. You know, they had an idea to start a business, and that idea was in the unseen place. It was in their mind, and, you know, they took that idea and they wrote it out. You know, it's one thing to have an idea, but take that idea from that unseen place in your mind and your heart, you know, put it on paper, you know, write the vision and make it plain. You know, I believe advertisers have learned this um, this principle here, you know, uh, to write it out in big, bold, block letters to draw you in. And I believe by putting that out, you know, faith, you know, definitely faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But there's something there's power in sight, too, as well, you know, and perceiving that thing. If you can perceive it and see it and, and see that it's tangible. And I believe there's also a, a kingdom principle that's there as well, because you're bringing it out of that. Uh, unseen place into a physical place into the physical realm and that's a that takes faith you say hey i'm believing god to bring this idea to pass and so i'm just not going to no longer just let this thing just stay in my head i'm going to put some pen to paper i'm going to write out my business plan i'm going to um you know get in the council of the holy spirit we're going to get together we're going to frame um this idea to form of a ministry or a business or an outreach you know to uh touch the world around us A good buddy of mine uh, that I call my accountability brother, um, we often um, talk with each other and have some, you know, some real deep uh, spiritual conversations. And one of the things that came out of that conversation was an idea is a divine, is a divine instruction from God. And I believe um, George Washington Carver, uh, an African-American inventor, um, really uh, gives us an insight or a model of what that looks like and have an idea or talking to God about, you know, um, witty ideas and inventions and, and seeking God for his wisdom and insight and understanding. You know, it's just like um, a small child. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is likened unto a small child. You know, so um, just think about if you're a parent and you have children and they're very inquisitive, you know, they're coming to you and asking questions. Um, and one of those significant questions is those why questions. You know, that why question is what helps you get to the heart and intent of a thing. Um, let's listen to this, George Washington Carver. Reading about nature is fine, but if a person walks in the woods and listens carefully, he can learn more than what's, what is in books, for they speak with the voice of God.
For George Washington Carver, that is exactly what he did during one of his lectures. Dr. Carver described the conversations with God that got him started studying the peanut. I asked, dear creator, please tell me what the universe was made for. And the great creator answered, you want to know too much for the little mind of yours. Ask something more your size. And then I asked, dear creator, tell me what a man was made for. Again, the great creator replied, little man, you still ask too much. Cut down the extent of your request and improve your intent. And I often say um, that, you know, or that religion would say, don't question God. And it's not about not questioning God. It's in how you question God. And, and when you come to sincerity of heart, you know, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask God. And God desires to give us insight and understanding. You know, um, I myself uh, in YouTube is filled with a lot of resource and information and um information can save you a lot of money or make you a lot of money as well and so i had needed to do some repairs on a hot water heater and um and was not really having the funds to actually go out and buy a new one and god gave me the wisdom and insight on how to repair it so um yeah god can do just that for you Continuing on, so then I ask, please, Mr. Crater, will you tell me why the peanut was made? That's better, but even that's infinite. I mean, he was just telling, he was telling uh, Mr. Carver that, hey, that that's an infinite um, conversation to have about the peanut. But here, what do you want to know about the peanut? Mr. Crater, can I make milk out of the peanut? What kind of milk do you want? Good Jersey milk or just plain boarding house milk? And then the great creator taught me how to take the peanut apart and put it back together again. And I think that is very powerful. Dr. Carver's work, um, as you just read through this slide here, included um, all kind of ideas and inventions here, glue, bleach, shampoos. Um, uh, it, it was reported that he uh, extracted medications from weeds and uh, separation of fats, oils, gums, and sugars. 
Um, but here at the latter part of this uh, slide, it says, there are amazing discoveries yet to be found that God is waiting on someone to ask him about. George Washington Carver is an excellent model for us of how God wants to speak to us. Um, you're his child and you belong to him. And um, we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. And I remember uh, one day praying and I was looking up at the sky, I guess being deep. <laughs> and, um, and I was, you know, wanted to have that moment or intimate moment with God and uh, looking up at the stars. And God was like, you know, hey, you know, what you looking way up here for? I'm like really inside of you. I'm so close to you, just like, you know, breath and breathing. That's how close I am, you know. Stop looking way up here like, you know, you and I are so distant. Um, great is he that is in us and he that is in the world. Jesus said, me and my father will come and make our boat on the inside of you. you you're a very unique um, uh, person. You're a very unique creature, you know, created in the image and the likeness of his son, Christ Jesus. You know, our life is hid in Christ. You have access to so much. God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And I have to say, you know, the, the super solution, you know, God wants to put um, the extraordinary on our ordinary. God takes ordinary men and women to do extraordinary things. And um, a while back, our pastor, not too long ago, preached about and mentioned um, that um, according to tradition, a lot of people believe that Samson was kind of like a weak, you know, feeble uh, guy in stature um, in and you can think of that because God said, I take the base things, the foolish things of this world to confound the wisdom of the wise. And God put this great anointing of strength on Samson. And uh, he did these special feats, you know, all in the name of the Lord and um, through the covenant that he had with God in, in, in his hair. 
Um, so um, you are the solution. And the Bible tells us that we have a better covenant than what Daniel had, than what Joseph had, than what Samson had, you know, built upon better promises. Um, and God is looking throughout the whole wide world to show himself strong on the behalf of his children. You know, the world is scratching their heads, uh, administrators, uh, governments, institutions, and entities are scratching their head on how to wrap their uh, mind and heart around, you know, problems and how to solve them. Um, you know, various debates on uh, this party or that political party, how we're going to solve this and how we're going to solve that. You know, but we have access to the wisdom of God and you have the potential and the position and the proximity because of your relationship with God to be the solution to the world around you. Um, listen to this. In Daniel chapter 1, verses 17 through 19, God gave these four young men knowledge and skill in both books and life. In addition, Daniel was gifted in understanding all sorts of vision and dreams. And at the end of the time set by the king for their training, the head of the royal staff brought them into Nebuchadnezzar. And when the king interviewed them, he found them far superior um, to all the other young men. So here, you know, God wants us to, you know, God will position us to speak to heads of states. You can find uh, Joseph and Daniel, you know, uh, was there positioned, you know, to speak to what we would consider a modern day president or in some instance a dictator, you know, given uh, Pharaoh or, you know, given Nebuchadnezzar, they were definitely not elected leaders. <laughs> but God positioned them in the halls of government to speak to the heads of state. You know, God wants to position his people to have the ear of the mayor, to have the ear you know, um, of a governor, have the ear of an alderman, you know, or to have the ear of the president, you know, to speak forth the counsel of God, to give insight and understanding and to, you know, be a problem solver. That's what the world is, need is, you know, solution uh, giving people, you know, and God wants us to be solution giving people. Listen to this, um, Exodus thirty-one. These are this is one of my um, one of my uh, favorite verses, uh, one through five, uh, or verses. God spoke to Moses. See what I've done. I personally chosen Bezel, son of Uri, son of Ur, and of the tribe of Judah, and I filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him skill and know-how and expertise in every kind of craft to create designs and work in gold, silver, bronze, and to cut and set gemstones, to carve wood, and he's an all-around craftsman. You know, um, and it's not to negate, you know, going to school or learning the trade, but man, there are some people that we have encountered that are just gifted, just like that. You know, they were born with these natural-born gifts and talents of, in, in arts and artery and uh, craftsmanship, um, you know, woodworking, 
iron working you know they can create uh, geniuses they can create uh, these master um, arts pieces and, and, and designs and creative creative designs and material putting material together you know so God definitely you know how much more us and especially with the anointing you know on our lives you know being empowered by the Holy Spirit you know, um, God wants to use us in, 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 in unique and awesome ways. You know, I often pray for my children and I say, God, give them wisdom, insight and understanding, you know, in their studies. You know, that's the same type of prayer you can pray, you know, for yourself, for your children and you're in school or college. You know, I believe God can give you more of a depth of principle, you know, behind the depth of the studies that you have already. You know, and that's just what we have that we're privileged to have as kingdom citizens. Um, Peter verses uh, chapter Peter uh, chapter one verse three, for his divine for his divine power has bestowed upon us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness through true and personal knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and excellence. You know God has truly given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. The resolve of what you need is on the inside of you in the person of the Holy Spirit. God is just waiting for you to access it by faith and to, um, you know, God, what have you put in my hands to prosper me? You know, and that very thing that you crying and asking God for in your finances could be that very idea that you just sitting on and, and not stepping out on. And I think, you know, another hindrance to us stepping out sometimes to, you know, the ideas that's in our hearts is, um, you know, is it golly enough? You know, um, is this... Um, you know, uh, you know, because of our tradition, our filters, sometimes through traditions, you know, um, well, this is secular and this is holy and, you know, and create um, in tradition and religion have created sometimes these false dichotomies. And wherever you show up in life, you know, um, in, in life, that's your ministry. Ministry is a lifestyle. You are a kingdom citizen and the kingdom of God is within you. And wherever you show up, the kingdom of God shows up with you. Um, whether that's in business, whether that's on a job. Listen, you can be um, the lowest man on the totem pole working at Taco Bell, but you're the highest authority there spiritually because you have access to the wisdom of God. You have access to the one who desires to answer his prayer. 
you you have access to the one who's will who's ready um, and stands ready to give you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can even ask or think. That's the power that you have, and because you're that low, you may be that low man on the totem pole. Because you're you're there, that job will be blessed. Um, the people in that business will be blessed. The business owner will be blessed. Um, your coworkers will be blessed because you're there. So um, that's just something to you know, food for thought and to to think about. Um, yep, like I said, the super solution. Um, another uh, author um, and minister uh, teacher um, is Dr. Bill Johnson, and this quote is from his uh, one of his books called The Manifesto for a Normal Christian Life. People often come to me and ask me to pray for them that they would discover God's will for their life, and that's one of the ultimate questions that a lot of people ask. And I already know God's will for their life. It is to heal the sick, to raise the dead, cast out devils, and cleanse the lepers. And they say yes, but I need to know if it, if I should be a school teacher or a missionary. <laughs> and I say, well, just pick one, and then heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and cleanse the lepers. Or they would say, I just want to know whether I should be married or I should be single. And I reply and I say, what do you want to be? I really want to be married. And then I tell them, then get married. But then heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils and cleanse the lepers. You know, God really makes that really plain for us. Right. You know, wherever you show up, man, God, you can. Um, there's awesome testimonies, you know, that I have personally where I've seen God, you know, do some miraculous things. And like I said, wherever you show up, the kingdom of God shows up with you. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And you have the 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 the, the access um, and the capacity because of Christ in you, you know, to speak peace in an environment and command peace, to command the blessing, you know, in the lives of people. God desires for his blessing to fall on the just just as well as the unjust. You know, so I say step out and start exercising that authority that you have on the inside of you. You know, step out and, and take that leap of faith and write down that idea. You know, um, God is giving you that all access pass, you know, to, you know, to his throne, come boldly to the throne of grace, wherein you may attain mercy.
in talking to uh, Pastor Aaron, um, he uh, um, and sharing and, and breaking down, you know, what his heart and vision is, you know, for us and for the church and what God has given him and direction, not just for us, but for the community that I believe God has planted us in. And like I said before, I believe and know that um, that uh, our church, you know, is definitely foundational ground zero for what God wants to do and transformation and change in Kankakee. And God is raising up what I believe is uh, community ambassadors or community missionaries, you know, to go out, you know, into um, the various spheres of influence within the Kankakee area, Kankakee County, or maybe even be a launching pad, you know, to in, in, in various other countries um, around the world, you know, that we will send out leaders, train and equip leaders and send them out uh, to be um, kingdom influencers in the world around us. And so we can see transformation and, and disciple people and uh, for them to see the glory and the goodness of God and all that we do, you know, for for God, it, you know, in our ideas becoming that vehicle and God using to bless the world around us. So that's why the idea is a divine instruction from God. That idea may be the very thing that the world needs, um, you know, for healing, for deliverance, for change, for transformation. You know, God may give you an idea, you know, um, you taking kingdom um, scriptures and, uh, and kingdom principles in the form of a program, you know, to mentor young kids or mentor troubled teens, you know. So um, the limit, the... The possibilities are limitless, you know, when God is on our side and Pastor Aaron, um, you know, uh, to educate, uh, you know, people who understand the role in God's kingdom, according to scripture, um, to empower, you know, identify the gifts that individuals possess and support. And this uh, presentation is is a part of that, and you know, to help us to find this, you know, to discover these these hidden talents and abilities that's that that. And some time have laid dormant on the inside. God wants to stir those things up and activate us and, and send us forth and, you know, um, to manifest the reality of his kingdom, you know, through our gifts, talents and abilities. Um, create opportunities for them to operate in them and provide resources for the same, you know, and also to be a, a sense of support and, um, you know, for one another, holding each other accountable to the ideas that God had given us. You know, so um, that's what I would like to be. That's part of my passion is to see you walk out what God has put within you, um, that there will also be a culture of reproducing ourselves and deploy and eventually, you know, send people into the mission field according to their gift and calling. And um, the next slide will kind of, you know, help us define uh, the mission field. And after this workshop, there's another workshop, a secondary workshop to this that we're developing you know, as a follow up. So, um, you know, to help us really define the mission field and, uh, and to define the vehicle, you know, God want us to use to travel within that mission field, you know, and to open up that the back seat of that car, that trunk, and, the, and, and to let out these gifts that God's put within us to bless the world around us. You know, the Bible says the whole wide world is groaning for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. And so now if, uh, let's see if we can click this uh, YouTube clip and, um, and see if we can get some commentary here from um, Dr. Lance Wallenew, another phenomenal pastor, uh, well, former pastor. Uh, 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 he's a motivational speaker, teacher, um, and prominent leader in the body of Christ. He's been featured on... Um, um, Jim Baker's show, um, 
you know, prophetic leader, very prophetic in insight and understanding. Hi, I'm Lance Well now. I want to talk to you for a moment about this concept called the 7M mandate. In reality, it started with a conversation I had in the year 2000. I had been talking to Lauren Cunningham, who is the founder of Youth with a Mission, and Lauren was sharing with me about a conversation he had had with Bill Bright. The two of them were visited, actually, by the Lord within the same 24 hours, and God spoke to Well, I don't probably think it's likely that the I clipped the <laughs> I clicked the link. I don't know if that was uh, they record the audio, but you know, take the opportunity. I hope you took the opportunity to listen to um, Dr. Lance Wallen. We we'll just click on the link. Um, maybe I could see if I can somehow add that to this uh, presentation as well. Um, but yeah, just click on the link there, and um, that will help us kind of you know broaden our understanding of the mission field. Um, you know, God has definitely, you know, given us a greater revelation and understanding to what um, he's called us to do or to help us define, you know, or broaden our definition of the mission field. Um, and this is my favorite part of the slide. You know, permission for the mission is granted. Uh, Matthew 28 and 19, you know, go. Um, God has given you the green light in um, these workshops and uh in our hands-on workshop, the next workshop we have, would definitely be hands-on and help us shape these things so that we can go and fulfill the Great Commission, you know, according to our uniqueness, to the uniqueness of who you are, your personality, your gifts, talents, and abilities, you know, that are unique to you. 
Um, and then some, you might find that some in the workshop found out that, hey, you know, I had the same similar idea, you know, and the Bible says God sent them out two by two, you know, so that is that is a great force multiplier, you know, two by two. The Bible says if two touch and agree on anything here on earth, it shall be done by our father in heaven. Two is better than one, you know, um, a three, four cord is not easily broken, you know two people plus the Holy Spirit and God working in their midst. So um, you, we found out a lot about each other, you know, and sharing, you know, what God has put within our hearts and what we're passionate about and begin to write things, things down. So I just encourage you to write down, you know, what you're passionate about, you know, list them down. And then the if you can number, you know, which one really, you know, excites you the most, you know, if you can categorize them, you know, giving them a scale of one through 10, you know, um, if not, just, just write them all down. The idea is, is, you know, not too strange, not too weird, you know, just write it down and, but no more so than anything that God has given you the grace and the ability that you need to go. All right. God bless. All right, this is Jermaine Thomas, and I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation on vision casting. And our church is here. Getting ready. Yeah, put, write your email address down for me because we missed anybody over here. There is a. Uh, hey, Kim, we got you. There's a PDF file, email what? address. Email address. Yes, because there's a file I want to send to everybody. I was going to print it out, but I figured if I email it, it's yours. You can use it and you can share it. You know, things like that. So I just print it out. But there is some questions I want to pull from it. Um, later after I do this. So, um, just kind of giving an overview, and then we can open up in a word of prayer. I have Pastor Aaron open this up in a word of prayer. Um, we're going to uh, at least give probably like about 10, maybe 15 minutes, 15 minutes or so to the PowerPoint, and then we're just going to break in and feel free, let the Lord to share. Um, you know, come up. We're gonna frame some things for us and our vision and frame it. So you you'll see how how it goes. You know, the, so the first part is just PowerPoint presentation. The second part is us kind of, you know, kind of like a working group type of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is my setting. I'm comfortable in this setting. I don't know. Sometimes in the pulpit, I get really nervous because I'm like really away from everybody. <laughs> but this, for whatever reason, I feel really like calm yeah. <laughs> and cool. So I'm in my element right here. And so. Um, other than that, Pastor Aaron, you open us up with a word of prayer. Sure. Um, just so everybody knows, it's a restroom right here, so you don't have to go all the way up to the front. Everything is in there you need. So let's pray. So, Father, we thank you that you are the great visionary that you have saw from the beginning to the end, and you know everything in the middle. And by your grace, you have included us what you see, not just to be uh, recipients, but to be agents of what we have received, to give to the world in so many different ways. So Lord, we just thank you for your uh, vision in Jermaine to set this up for us. Um, we trust your gift in him to enhance your gift in us and help us, Lord, to not just listen, but to take to heart the things that are being said, um, to understand the discipline of walking out of here with very clear steps. We pray your anointing um, be enhanced on Jermaine's mouth and heart as he speaks to us, and we entrust our hearts with you today as you use him. We thank you for it, God. We know that this is just the beginning of something greater in our lives. We give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, all right. Um, yeah, I'm not an expert uh, on vision casting. 
<laughs> Just putting that out there. <laughs> but uh, uh, I do listen to the Holy Spirit, and he's the expert. And my dependence is totally upon him. And some of the things that I share in here is just something, you know, some of the things that the Lord has seated in my heart. And a part of my passion is to see others, you know, grab a hold of their passion and purpose in life. Um, I think it was Miles Monroe that talked about uh, purpose. He talked a lot about purpose. Uh, he passed away, well, I think, a couple years ago. But he talks a lot about purpose, and that's the, the most significant question that a lot of people have in their hearts is, you know, what am I here for? You know, what is God's purpose and, and destiny for my life? And so in this PowerPoint, I hope that it builds your faith to stir up the faith of God in you. The Bible says we faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And, um, and we overcome by the blood of the Lamb's words, testimony. So, you know, testimony and his word to stir up, you know, what God has already put in you for vision and, um, and maybe give some shape and clarity, you know, to what God has put in your heart. Okay. All right. Um, Dr. Masmero. This is a quote from Dr. Masmero. He said, "The graveyard is the richest place on earth uh, because it is here that you will find all the hopes and dreams that were never fulfilled, um, the books that were never written, the songs that were never sung, the inventions that were never shared, the cures that were never discovered, all because someone was too afraid to take the first step and keep the problem." And keep with the problem or determine to carry out their dream. Uh, I think that is one of the most powerful quotes I have ever read in my life. Um, and so before I really get into tracking into the PowerPoint, there's a, a couple of hindrances or mindsets um, that I have to challenge, you know, first or address. You know, so if the Holy Spirit just give it to you to as what I'm sharing and I'm Definitely, you're going to, it's going to have a dialogue with the Holy Spirit, too. Um, but number one is addressing the spirit of fear. Uh, fear, uh, as people would say, uh, young people, uh, false evidence appearing real. Uh, we're either in two places in our life. We're either in a place of faith or fear. And uh, the Bible tells us that fear has torment. Uh, fear will keep you, fear of failure, fear of the unknown, you know, fear of stepping out, you know, those typical questions. What if this happened? You know, what if that happened? You know, what if this and what if that? You know, and that's usually like the dialogue that the enemy uses to hinder us or not feeling like we're adequate enough to uh, to do what's in our heart to do or what we feel, you know, passionate about. Um, another mindset that we have to challenge is, um, you know, is it holy enough? You know, is this a God idea? Is it, you know, sometimes we feel like it has to be in sync to like 500 scriptures, you know, in order for it to be godly. Um, for example, um, if uh, if music, you know, your gift or passion may be in music. Lecrae is a great example of that. Um, he, he took a lot of criticism because he crossed over into a different genre of music and he felt like, you know, this is where God is calling him into that industry of music to make music that's not necessarily, you know, always have to have like Bible quotes in it, but it's, but their principles of the word of God. Tyler, uh, Tyler Perry is a good person to that is in his movies. His movies, uh, you know, carry a lot of biblical principles, you know, people, may argue with him about, you know, man dressing in the dress and things like that. And I understand, you know, those arguments, but you see God using people in a unique way, um, in unique situations. And so that's what God is calling for. Sometimes we, especially if you grew up traditionally in a church, you know, so a lot of our traditions um, could be a hindrance for us. Um, and then, you know, also, too, what God is dealing with us as the body of Christ is sometimes our false dichotomies, a lot of false dichotomies that, that are out there, you know, uh, secular and sacred. Um, your vocation can definitely be a platform of ministry. You don't have to be, you don't have to be an elder at the church. You don't have to be a pastor. 
uh, because the kingdom of God is within you. So you could be in the vocation of sports, and, and we see that with a lot of um, a lot of uh, athletes, you know, coming out in faith and saying, you know, hey, I have a faith in Jesus Christ, but yet they play football, and God is using that platform. Uh, What's this, Tim Tebow? You know, is one, and uh, the guy from uh, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Steph Curry is another one. Uh, yes, Steph Curry is another one. So, uh, vocation. I always look at ministry as a lifestyle. You know, we're kingdom citizens. Um, so, this is a culture for us. Loving on people, that's our culture. That's who we are. Those are our distinctions. Healing the sick, those are our, that's our culture. That's our distinction. You know, that's who we are. So, where we go, the kingdom of God is in us. And we carry the culture of God's kingdom and his character in us wherever we go. So wherever you show up in life, that's your platform. You know, mother, father, daughter, you know, sister, brother, you know, teacher. Uh, those are just your roles and functions. But your ultimate role and function in life is to be an ambassador, to be a light in the world around us. Amen. Uh, Habakkuk 2 and 2 and 3. Um, and God answered and said, write this. Write what you see. Write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. Um, and I think, Dan, you, you point out a lot, too, about the advertisers gotten this principle. You know what I mean? They gotten that, that articulation of vision and casting advertisement to, to, to grab our appeal. Uh, they, it's time for us to take our principles back, right, you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait, and it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on its way, and it will come right on time. So um, I like to journal. I do a lot of journaling. And so it's my encouragement that, um, you know, don't just talk about your ideas. You know, write them out. And I believe, personally, there's a principle to this. And um, um, it's taken, think about this, for example. And I had an epiphany one day. I was driving, um, I was working in Chicago up north, on the north side of Chicago, and I was driving up to the KFC one day. And um, when I was driving up, it was just, you know, a normal KFC type of thing, but but I thought about it for a minute. God was like, KFC started as an idea. That's right. It started in an unseen place. It started in the colonel's mind. Didn't nobody see it. Didn't nobody know it. He the only one that knew it existed. But he took that idea from an unseen place and he wrote it out. He wrote it, he brought it from the unseen and brought it into the scene. You know, whatever he did to, you know, put his business out there. And his idea, or an idea, is so powerful that it has the capacity to leave a legacy. And it has the capacity to outlive the person that brought it into fruition. Mm-hmm. You know, even though the colonel is deceased, his idea, the KFC, still lives on. His legacy still lives on. That's the power of an idea. Mm-hmm. And it's like if God give it to you, and let's just say there's no no platform for it to exist, but because God gave it to you, He will caused the platform to come into fruition and to make it exist. And I believe that. And I believe once you take it, because that's faith. You say, hey, I'm going to take this from this place. I'm not just going to let it just lean in my mind and lean in my mind. And, or you or you probably one of those type of inventive people and you thought about an invention. And sure enough, you didn't watch the infomercial and somebody came up with that idea. And you're like, dang, why I didn't, why I didn't just walk out on that stuff? Um, I was telling somebody, I'm, I'm not like a real big Rihanna fan or anything like that. But what she just did with her makeup deal to me was like phenomenal. She uh, started a makeup line uh, for women of color, you know, for foundation. And I didn't know that, you know, there was a, a market, you know, I, I wish I would've known, but that a lot of women of color um, weren't able to find certain foundations because it didn't exist for them. It wasn't a market for them in that in that makeup arena. So she catered to women of color. So I just, in, her business is blowing up. You know, so sometimes our inventions or ideas can be an upgrade or it could be something that's totally brand new. But you write that vision. 
me and a buddy of mine, we often have conversations, and uh, he's my accountability buddy. Um, and one of the things that came out of our conversations is an idea is a divine instruction from God. You know, that's how I perceive ideas. You know, a lot of times we don't perceive them that way. Oh, that's just me. And, you know, God is looking throughout the whole wide world to show himself strong on the behalf of us. You know, God wants to bring uh, witty ideas, inventions, ideas, books, movies, plays, poems, dance, you know, whatever that thing is that's in your heart uh, that's, that, that keep nagging at you. I don't care if you sleep, it's nagging at you. Uh, actually, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, and I was saying, this is how you define purpose, as I understand it, that um, passion you know, is a, is a uh, preset for purpose. And how you define your passion is that thing that you're willing to do 24-7, don't nobody really have to pay you to do it. You know what I mean? That speaks to, you know, where you can start the discovery process of finding, you know, what your purpose is and what God is saying to you. Um, George Washington Carver. How many of you guys ever heard of George Washington Carver? What, what do you know about George Washington? Um, I just remember hearing about him in um, history. I can't remember what. Okay, you remember from history class? Oh, yeah. Anybody remember what he's known for? The peanut butter, the peanut guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there was something else about um, George Washington Carver you may have not known. Uh, wait, no, he, 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 with the peanut, he, he developed over. 200 different things from the peanut? Yeah, right. yeah. And, and not just his invention side, but I want to talk about his faith side, okay. his walk side. But yeah, definitely, just to bring out who George Washington Carver is, we're familiar with, uh, African-American man. Um, can Loud, have, louder. Okay, okay, yeah, African-American uh, inventor, uh, known for the peanut guy. And listen, this, listen to this, guys. Uh, reading about nature is fine. But if a person walks in the woods and listens carefully, he can learn more what is he can learn more than what's in books, for they speak with the voice of God. George Washington Carver did exactly that. During one of his lectures, Dr. Carver described the conversation with God that got him started studying the peanut. Started with a conversation with God. I asked, this is George Washington Carver, he said, Dear Creator, please tell me what the universe was made for. This is him in God's dialogue as he's describing it. The Creator answered, You want to know too much for the little mind of yours. Ask me something more your size. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right? Then I asked, Dear Creator, tell me what a man was made for. And again, the Creator replied, Little man. You still ask too much. Cut down the extent of your request and improve your intent. I always uh, tell people, uh, you know, old tradition say, oh, don't question God, don't question God. I say question God, but it's in how you question God. The Bible says the kingdom of God is likened to a small child. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so, and what do children ask all the time? Why? 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 You tell them, you explain to them logically as you can, and they still going to ask you why. But it's that why question that... that gets you to the intent and the purpose of the thing is the why question. So then I ask, please, Mr. Creator, will you tell me why the peanut was made? That's better, but even in, even that's infinite. What do you want to know about the pre peanut? Mr. Creator, can I make milk out the peanut? What kind of milk do you want? Good Jersey milk or just plain boarding house milk? And then the great creator taught me how to take the peanut apart and put it back together again. You know, a lot of times we read in the Bible, we read, you know, stories of men and women who did special feats, you know, for the Lord and God, like Samson and God anointed him. Like the pastor was talking about, you know, a skinny guy, God anointed him. But, you know, a lot of times we read that in the Bible, but Jesus are just ordinary people like you and I. God wants to put the extraordinary on your ordinary in your life. And that's that's our expectation of what we can expect as kingdom citizens, as children of God. Um, and as Dan said, these are, um, you know, 
all of his ideas and things, shampoo, synthetic rubber, innovation for natural agricultural resources, uh, oil, gums, sugars, and these are all the amazing discoveries yet to be found. There are amazing discoveries yet to be found that is waiting on someone to ask him about. George Washington Carver is an excellent model for us of how God wants to speak to us. Amen. Amen. Let me just pause right there. Y'all identify with that? Oh, yeah. That God wants to speak to you. You believe that? That oh, God yeah. wants to speak oh, yeah. to you like that? It's not, it doesn't matter about your age. The, uh, the young lady, uh, young African American girl, I believe 12 years old, and it, listen, and it's not just about inventions and books. You know, God can be speaking to you about aspects of ministry, um, uh, aspects of how to, you know, uh, you know, take what he's put within you, your gifts, talents, and abilities, and make it a ministry. It don't necessarily have to be a business or an idea of invention. 